All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of To The Max Outdoors. Um, it is currently July 23rd. It is about 10, 15 in the morning. It's 86 degrees already. It says the reel fills 91. And because of my super limited schedule and time constraints, I'm going to make a video here of putting in a small micro food plot. Um, about two weeks ago, the hunting farmer, a uh, YouTube channel that I follow, guys out of Pennsylvania, he did a really neat small micro food plot. He put a camera in it and he had great success with it. Now, I don't, uh, I don't expect a whole bunch out of this one. As you can see, we are in the woods. This, what this was is uh, about 16 years ago, this was a transition for a logging, um, they pulled logs down off the hill from be my left side here. They pulled logs down off the hill. It wasn't a landing, it was just a staging area. They brought them down here and then they finished them off the rest of the way down the hill. So this, this in here has never been planted before in the 25 years that we've owned this property and it's been woods ever before that as, as far as I've ever known. And the soil's pretty good in here. There's a lot of leaf matter on top of it. And to be honest with you, the hunting farmer, he gave me a, a really good thought of why wouldn't I do something like that? Now, that being said, I have a commercial food plot mix that we'll go over here after a bit because agriculture is not a big thing in my area. So finding simple things like rye or something like that is not really, uh, it's not readily accessible and I don't feel like buying that stuff off the internet. So I paid a little more for a food plot mix, but We'll see what happens here. Um, just like the hunting farmer, and I, I'm not stealing this video from you, Dave, at the hunting farmer. I just liked your idea and I'm gonna do my own version of it here. Now, I'm not gonna till this like he did. I have a set of disc for the four wheeler that we'll go over here when we get to that point. But just like the hunting farmer, I'm gonna take my weed eater and I'm gonna mow this area down with the weed eater. And really probably all said and done when this ends up it's going to be about 20 yards wide well it's not about it i'm going to make it exactly 20 yards wide and 45 yards long so it's not going to be a huge kill uh, i call them a kill plot because i'm going to be perched in a tree stand here that you guys will see video from here in september my main goal between this food plot and the ones that we're going to put in here in the next month or so my main goal is to get into these in September and early October and harvest a good mature buck out of them. Um, I do have two really good mature bucks that uh, the property that we're at here just, it, uh, it seems like when the rut hits, a lot of the bucks leave us, but trying to, trying to combat that with keeping some food plots on here and keep some of these does in um, if you guys have followed me for any time in the past, you know that, oh shoot, that's probably about six to 700 yards down in the bottom of this here is a creek bottom with really nice grass down in there. We do maintain some a good doe population down through there, but we're getting up towards the top of the ridges here. And usually when the rut kicks in, I mean, you, you'll see some bucks, but I'm trying to hold, I'm trying to hold a bachelor group. Um, directly behind the camera here is some, uh, their hay fields or some cattle in them and I always do get some uh, bachelor groups coming out of them early September early October but the downside to that is is the neighbors cows get out a good bit so hopefully they don't get in here and rummage through all this and as you can tell the flies and mosquitoes are tearing me alive but I want to get to work so just like I said brief rundown what we're going to do 20 yards wide 45 yards long I'm going to take the weed eater through here we'll get it all mowed down to my liking then we'll bring you back I'm not going to show you all this because it's going to be way longer of a video than I want it to be if I show you all this so instead of me quit swatting all these flies here I'm going to get to work and we'll bring you back here once we're done weed eating um, and I'll show you the disc setup so stick stick with me we'll get right all right so as you can see around me here I've got it all weed eated down um, and I also took the rake to it, just like the hunting farmer did. I just took a, uh, a, a more of a rock rake to it. He used a leaf rake, but I took a rock rake to it. 
and I, I got it pretty heavy I got it raked pretty heavily down as you can see around here the uh, I've got all the leaf matter up and all the uh, grass that I cut I got it all I got it all straight back to the edges so everything now is exposed this is beautiful soil I actually wish I had this in my garden at home it is absolutely beautiful and what we got right here is this is just a uh, I think they call them like a Brindley hitch attachment I think somewhere like in the 60s and 70s, these were really popular for like garden tractors, whatever, or sleeve hitch, Brindley hitch, whatever you want to call it, Brindley, Brownley, I ain't sure how to say it, but I will tell you that these, these discs and, and potato plows and turn plows, uh, you can find them, if you just step out into any rural community, you can find these for, for, for damn near nothing. I mean, I, I probably have, uh, I've had this one here for a good number of years, but I give 50 bucks for this disc, a potato plow, and a turn plow. Now they had the sleeve style adapter on them. A quick internet search and you'll understand what I'm talking about, like a Brindley sleeve hitch. All I did was I cut the coupling off for that and I just welded some round stock through it, drilled a hole down through it and just attach it to the four wheeler. Now the, the downside to this kind of stuff is, is they're, they're light you can't really break up a lot of ground with it. So what I've got here are three eight inch center blocks and one twelve. And you'll see here when I'm finished that, uh, I, I don't know, I, I said I wanted 20 by 40, 20 yards by 40 yards. And actually ended up hitting a bunch of moss on the backside of that where it's really shaded. I don't think this backside gets any sun. So actually what I ended up with was 25 by 30. So. A little bit shorter than I wanted, but not really. But you'll see here, I'm probably going to take a. Man, the flies are tearing me up. I'm probably going to take half hour, 45 minutes, and I'm just going to run this four wheeler over this like crazy, and I'm going to get this broke up as best as possible, only using this disc here. And I'm in an area here where I cannot get the tractor to. Like I said, we do have a, a four foot tiller for our tractor, but. Unfortunately, where this is, I can't get the tractor to it, and it's hard enough to get a full wheeler up here. I had to make multiple trips. The full wheeler actually wouldn't pull this up the hill that I had to come up. It, uh, it's it's a, too steep for it, and nevertheless, this is all going to be done by hand or light tools like this set of disc here. And this disc here is only, let's see, two, three, it, it's probably 40 inches wide, so. And it's got what four it's got eight set of discs on it so i'm guessing they're a 10 inch cut but i'll run this thing I'll, I'll keep intersecting perpendicular to my cuts i'll go across it this way and i'll go across it this way and i'll cut it on a 45. I, you'll see it here in the end but you'll probably be pretty uh it'll amaze you what this little tool does if you just take your time and go over it now that being said, this thing's not going to break up brand new clay or anything that's hard packed. It, it, it's not meant for that and it's not going to do that. But like I said, we are in the woods. This was all timber at one point. It's been a lot of years since there was any kind of timber done. And when they used this as a staging yard, they did not peel the topsoil off of it. They just simply drug down to here. They skidded them down here with a dozer and then a grapple skidder picked them up and took them the rest of the way down here. So. This area is really pretty undisturbed and it's all good topsoil in here. There's no real clay. I, the region I'm in here is, is known for yellow and red clay, something awful, but this particular spot has been woods probably all its life. So I'll quit rambling. Um, I'll do a short little pass around here with a four wheeler and then I'm gonna turn the camera off. Like I said, it is, it is crazy hot. As you can see there, the fat is just melting off of me and the flies and the mosquitoes are absolutely tearing me up and I've put deed on but it or off I should say off on but I think I'm just sweating it off uh, but I think I drink a bottle of water and then I sweat it all out but anyways nevertheless now I will say that that took me probably about an hour and 20 minutes to weed eat this and to rake it all and by far raking was the hardest part by far um, I wish there was a, a machine tool that raked it that I had but that was pretty tough, but I wanted to get down. I wanted to get down to good dirt. I didn't want to try to disc through that leaf matter and grass. Um, this little set of disc here, you know, it needs all the help you can get it. Now, 
you could bring a tiller up here, like a walk behind tiller, which I do have. I, I could bring that up here, but let's use this equipment here and probably hopefully somebody sees this, pick this kind of stuff up at a yard sale, flea market, whatever. Just get out in rural America a tad bit and you'll find this stuff everywhere. Half the time people have it, don't even know what it is. It's handed down generations. You can pick it up for nothing. 10 minutes with a welder and a couple dollars worth of scrap steel and you can hook it right up to any four wheeler and I know most of us as outdoorsmen you either have a four wheeler side by side or a big garden tractor even uh, get out there and find this kind of stuff and well it's, it's easy to do is what I'm trying to say so I'm gonna make a circle here and then I'll turn the camera off So I hope that kind of illustrates there what I was talking about. Like I said, you just seen it in real time. That's all I did. But just in one pass right there, just in one pass right there, I've broke a, a let's say half inch of ground up. That's just in one, that's just in one little pass right there. You can see how it did. I think that was key to getting all that leaf matter up with the rock rake that I used. Get it down to as good bare soil as you can get. Now I still do have some places of grass where there's actual grass in there that, that was probably seeded from the timber company years ago, but that's what I'm trying to tell you about these little tools here. Yeah, they're little and they're light, but take a little bit of time, put a little bit of weight on them, and then take your time working it in, and you're gonna see here, I'll bring you back here shortly. You'll see how easy this is to do. So we'll get back with you when I get done getting it all uh, cut up here with a disc. Okay, so there we go. It has been, let's see, it has been exactly 22 minutes since I started from where we left off before. It has been 22 minutes, and with this set of discs right here, I hope you can see this. I mean, it, it has made a really nice seed bed. I'm gonna say that it's in that two and a half to three inch range. Now, this ground is kind of soft and it's a tad bit more wet than I would like it to be. It's sticking to the uh, disc just a tiny little bit, but overall, I'm really happy with it. Like I was saying, you see what you can do there really quick with uh, simple cheap tools and a four-wheeler. It's pretty easy to do. Now the four-wheeler is kind of compact and um, obviously the disc is not as wide as the track of the four-wheeler. So in this small little area here that we've got I'm running outside my track so the foiler is kind of packing some of that down and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rake and I'm going to rake some of these humps down real quick but all in all that's pretty uh that's pretty neat uh, fortunately it didn't run into many rock but you can see there I mean yeah I, I'm two and a half three inches I'm really really happy with it I'm actually probably going to quit walking on it it's wetter than I wanted it to be but so there you go 22 minutes from where I was talking about the disc and the the, the ground to now to, to disc up 22 minutes is what it took so 
overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to get myself set up here to uh, spread some seed, and we'll talk about that. All right, so I've got the, the seed bed little food plot here uh, raked out like I like it. It's all nice and, and fairly fluffy on top. And like I said, the part of the state I'm in, well, West Virginia for in general, more specifically, the part of the state I'm in, there's no marketable agriculture here. So for me to be able to go to, say, Tractor Supply, Rural King, uh, Southern States, uh, we don't really have any co-op. So it is really tough for me to get, say, like a rye or um, even buckwheat even. I don't know what the year or what's going on this year. Maybe COVID's still playing a big role in it. I'm not real sure, but I wasn't able to get I wanted something like a winter wheat or a oat. I kind of wanted like a cereal grain or a, a forage grain maybe. And there again, I am not a farmer. Um, I have no idea about agriculture. I just read and, and I see see what other people do. But that being said, unfortunately for me, I'm kind of stuck to being able to put my hands on some kind of more expensive food plot pre-mix stuff like this like this is the only thing i can go put my hands on uh this was uh i think i picked this up at tractor supply and you get 24 bucks for it and it's uh i don't even know what it, it'll do it says it'll do 11,000 square feet or a quarter of an acre we obviously don't have a quarter of an acre here by no means at all so i'm gonna put uh probably just a shade under half of this down here i, I don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna spread it out here and see what i feel comfortable with i'm not going to overplant it by no means but what this is is this is evolve harvest uh five card draw and the what made me select this over the other ones that we have in it is it does have it does have winter wheat forage oats white clover turnips and chicory I'm really concerned about turnips. Uh, I've never had luck with turnips here in my area, but I, I wanted I wanted those cereal forage grain. I'm gonna call them a cereal grain. I'm not sure what they are, but I, I know by reading that they're a forage winter wheat and a forage oats, and can never go wrong with clover, chicory. I, I don't really hold, know a whole lot about chicory. I, I read that deer like it, but I've never had that experience in my life growing it. So we'll see here. Now, when you come down here to the planning map on this, I, I'm, I'm in between uh, two and three, really, probably more so in three than any, but, and it actually tells me uh, mid to late August. Like I said, it is at the end of July. I don't, uh, I don't have the time to do our two big food plots and one like this in in that august time frame I, I just run out of time max plays a ton of baseball august and september i'm trying to get ready to hunt uh, i haven't been down to my mountain camp for a couple months uh, so nevertheless i'm solely planning this right now because i want to hunt this uh our bow season comes in september 24th of this year i believe it's what it, i just read the regulations i think it's september 24th my intentions is to hunt this the first let's say month of bow season. I, I hope this is up. Um, in my area right here, you wait into August and we struggle with rain and in, in the middle throughout the end of August, we struggle with rain. Well, I've always in the past trying to grow a food plot, planting it like it says, we struggle to get rain on it and it really hurts it. I know that there's actually rain due this evening and then like the next seven days have a chance of rain. It's supposed to be in the nineties and in, in, in this part of the state here in West Virginia, when it's in the 90s and humidity is up 80, 70, 80, 90%, I can guarantee it's going to thunderstorm. So that's my whole reasoning for that. I, I'm, that's the only part of these directions that I'm not following. I'm going to hit this with 13, 13, 13 fertilizer, just like it says. I know that this soil, I, I did a soil sample on this on the prior video when I did the uh, food plot updates, what's that been, um, two months ago now, I did soil samples everywhere right here and the recommended pH is six to seven and a half. This was 6.3, I believe is what the WVU extension office told me. So I'm perfect for there. I don't have the 13, 13, 13 with me today to put on here. I, I forgot it at the house, but my grandfather will get it within the next couple of days, hopefully. 
or I'll get it a week from today. But that's the only part of this I'm not following is, is I'm planting in the wrong time. But like I said, the hunting farmer, he did it and he had great success. And I'm going to try to piggyback on him and not piggyback his video, but I'm going to piggyback what he did and do it in my little same area there. Like I said, I'm not trying to steal a video from that guy, the hunting farmer. Go check him out. He's got 10 times the subscribers I got. And I really enjoy watching him and he kicked me into doing this because I've been wanting to do something small like this for a long time. I just never have. And watching that video, I thought, you know what? You need to take time and go do it. And here we are. So like I said, I'm not going to bore you with me spreading this out by hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this out by hand on here. I got a little hand broadcast else behind the, behind the camera. Here. I got a little hand broadcast spreader. I'm going to spread this out here by hand. And then I'm going to take the old trusty four wheeler here and I'm going to run it over and seed compact that in and we'll bring you back there. Okay, so I had to end up spreading this out by hand. The little hand, uh, the little hand broadcast spreader that I had wouldn't let this weed or oat seed go through it. There's a, uh, there's a bigger, uh, there's a bigger seed in this. Let me get it out here in my hand and get it in focus here for, bear with me for a second. You can see there between my ring finger and middle finger, there's a bigger, there's a bigger seed in this that wouldn't go through my little hand broadcast spreader. So I ended up putting it out by hand and I don't know if it comes out on video or not, but I, I've tried to cover it fairly decent. Um, I don't, I don't want to feel like I overseeded it and I don't think I did. All right, everybody, here we go. The seed bed has been uh, packed in, as you hopefully can see here on the video. I've taken a four-wheeler and I've went back and forth this entire thing. There is four-wheeler tracks from one side of it to the other. I'm happy with soil to seed contact. Um, I think it packed in really well. Um, I got a Wild Game Innovations camera here and it's only set to photo. I have problems with these Wild Game Innovation cameras taking decent video or they clog my SD card up. Well, not clog it up, but I always get an SD card error if I try to video, but that's probably operator error. But anyways, uh, I'll just throw some random pictures out on social media every once in a while from his food plot. So follow me at To The Max Outdoors on uh, Instagram. I'll, I'll randomly put pictures up there. I probably will not do another YouTube video on this plot unless it absolutely takes off and flourishes and does something amazing. And then I'll show you how well that five card draw from evolved habitat did um, that being said probably the first part of bow season late September early October I will have myself perched in a poplar tree about 25 yards behind us here this spot right here has seven trails that intersect they all intersect exactly where the camera is like I said it's a pretty hot spot here and this is a morning this is a morning area it's not a very good afternoon area but in the mornings they're, they're coming over these ridges or there's a lot of different places they come from. They come through down through here. They congregate in around our hollow. We got a big bowl here with a couple hogbacks in it. It's real thick. And purposely keep them thick for daytime bedding. So that being said, um, I want to give a special thanks to the hunting farmer. He's the one that kind of pushed me to do this video by him doing his there a couple weeks ago. Anybody that's watching this video and doesn't follow a hunting farmer, go watch the guy. There's a reason why he's got 10 plus thousand subscribers. The guy does awesome. Um, he, he does awesome videos and I'm not taking any credit away from him. I'm not trying to piggyback off him. I just, I wanted to do this because I seen him do it. I've been wanting to do it for a long time, like I said earlier, and watching him do it made me come out and do it. So. Anybody that has any questions for any kind of the tools or whatever I used, like I said, Instagram to the max outdoors, uh, to the max outdoors at gmail.com. Shoot me a question on there or leave it down in the comments. I, I don't care to tell anybody what I used or how I did it or what kind of tools I got. I mean, I don't have anything expensive. I just got normal household stuff. Uh, like I said, the disc is a, uh, you can find them flea market yard sales. People out in the country got them. Nothing's real expensive, and uh, we'll see how this goes. So appreciate for watching to the Max Outdoors.